Let's head into this chapter. So far, we're about to start up the fight with Vegeta versus Granola. I've been waiting for this. Goku already had his shot last chapter, so let's see what we got. You already know Vegeta is ready to throw hands right now. And he tells Granola, he says, hey, you know tricks like fusion and clones? They won't work on me. Granola shortly explains that he used the clones to save his strength because his ultimate goal in the end is still to kill Frieza. Granola, I know you can't hear me, but if only you knew where Frieza was right now. If only you were there to see Goku whip his ass the first time on Namek, you would have been so proud. A bit more bickering goes on between the two and Vegeta eventually just doesn't give a shit. The only thing that matters to Granola is to get revenge on all the Saiyans, so there's no use of Vegeta trying to talk him out of it. And Vegeta's never really been much of a talker for things like that, right? So what's the use? And thus Vegeta powers up in his Super Saiyan form. And Vegeta's still at it with these little jabs at Granola and his people. He says, prepare to perish along with your people's history. You already know if Vegeta was on console was playing some COD in 2K, he'd be the first motherfucker to talk shit before a game even starts. Now let's see if you can back your shit up right now, Vegeta. Hands go to the ground and Vegeta begins his attack. Explosions begin to detonate right in front of Granola, but Granola seems unfazed. And that he is, Vegeta didn't get a single scratch on him. Your destructive power is lacking, so you make up for it with quantity, says Granola. Let me illustrate the gulf between us. And he takes this big ass rock and just pulls it with Vegeta towards him. And he hits Vegeta with one of those classic punches to the stomach in anime. The ones where you can't help but just cough. But luckily for Vegeta, it's not one of those with the blood coming out. So Vegeta is phased by it, but realizes how close he is to Granola and takes this opportunity to use another energy blast in front of Granola's face, point blank range. But he isn't quick enough, for Granola is just a little bit faster than he is. Then begins a nice little fight sequence over the water. Don't you guys love it in Dragon Ball where they start fighting over the water? There's something so pleasing about it. I can't believe my eyes here, but Granola actually has the upper hand. With that, I'm not so much surprised. What I am surprised about is it looks like he's hunting Vegeta at this point. Vegeta is just running away trying to make sure he doesn't get hit by anything. And one of the cooler things I've seen from Granolo so far. He positions his hands like it's a bow and gets ready and starts aiming, looking for Vegeta. He's trying to scout him in the water, find him. And it just works for his character, man. He blasts that one energy beam and Vegeta has to fucking hold on to it to stop it from exploding and causing damage. But he handles it and gets launched right out of the water. They're right back on land. Granola continues to start talking his shit. Granola says, no matter how powerful you are, I remain the strongest in the universe. The struggle is pointless. If this was early Dragon Ball Z Vegeta, you would have to kill Vegeta to get him to admit that you're stronger than he is. Which is why Vegeta is still one of my favorite character developments when it comes to Super. He says afterwards, I admit it, at the moment your strength and technique surpasses my own, but I'm still going to win. You already know Vegeta got something up his sleeve. I'm not going to lie to you and pretend that I haven't. I have seen the new images of Vegeta's new form, and I know that it's called Ultra Ego. I'm just curious now if he's going to use it by the end of this chapter, and I have no idea what Ultra Ego does. So I'm about to find out. In a distance from the current fight, we cut right back to Goku, and he is in terrible pain. Right around the heart area, you can see the damage that he took from Granola. Where's Granola, Goku wonders, as he looks up to the sky and sees his question answered. Vegeta is still holding on surprisingly, and at this moment, I start thinking, what is Vegeta going to possibly do to get inside Granola's head? Hakai is still not perfected yet. What does he possibly have up his sleeve? More careless beam starts heading towards Vegeta from Granola, and so Granola misses Vegeta and hits some of the last remains of the city that he grew up in. The same city that the Saiyans ended up destroying. Remember how I was just talking about getting inside Granola's head? Well, that's exactly what Vegeta starts trying to do. He says, you're fine blowing up what's left of the city full of all those precious memories? This next part gave me chills. So Granola ends up hitting Vegeta and getting a really good shot on Vegeta right in his stomach. Blood is coming out and everything. Vegeta is almost out. Until he makes a good point that I've been thinking about for a little bit. While it may look like he's about to go down, he begins to laugh a little bit. What fun. This feeling, it's been ages. There's no planet to protect, no people to save. Just me immersed in battle, my happy place. Just the thing to get a battle craze Saiyan's blood pumping. And for a second, I look at this panel and I'm thinking, did we just go back to DBZ Vegeta? The cold, ruthless killer Vegeta? Because it looks exactly like that. I'm looking at him and I'm like, oh no, this can't be any good. Granola, I know you're the strongest, but you may be in some trouble right now. 
We're not on Earth right now. We're not on a planet that Vegeta has any reason to protect and care about. So Vegeta is free to be an absolute fucking demon on the battlefield. And that's what he exactly becomes. He starts powering up. Goku notices. Vegeta's energy has just changed. It feels like the god energy to Goku, but it's not just the same old god energy that they've been using. Nah, it feels a little bit more special. I can honestly tell you, the moment that I seen these panels and I eventually seen Vegeta's face, no eyebrows, insane aura around him, I fanboyed out. It is once again time for an additional transformation. One where Vegeta is using god energy. And not just the Super Saiyan Blue God energy, but nah, the God of Destruction energy. He says, a God of Destruction taught me that power derived solely from instinct is unbounded. I am just itching to read this next chapter now. I need to see Vegeta do the craziest things in this form. I'm immediately even thinking way past the villain. I'm thinking, man, Goku, full Ultra Instinct mastered versus Vegeta's new ultra ego form no worries no limits no worrying about life form being destroyed just a pure all-out battle overall i gotta say this was a great vegeta chapter and i'm prepared to see the improvement you better put good fucking use of what beerus taught you i don't need this to be another moment like in the dbz movies where vegeta finally shows up gets a great couple of hits powers up badass speech and then clobbered immediately taken down like and sub if you enjoyed the video I will see you guys on the next one. I can't wait to get to it.